Alright, the next thing we're going to discuss is the forms that are embedded on your website. Now because we're working with a Premium Plus plan, we will be using the WooFoo form system as opposed to the built-in Gravity form system. If you want to learn more about the Gravity form system, please see our website under the Help section and you will find numerous tutorials on how to use Gravity forms. So in our situation, we're going to be using the WooFoo forms and we've got a whole bunch of forms we need to do, so I'm going to walk through one of them with you real quick. So the first one I'm going to start with is a simple one, email the PTA. We need to put a form here. So the very first thing we're going to do is log into Wufu. Once you've logged into Wufu, we're going to create a new form. Now I would highly recommend including your school's name in this form if you can. You don't have to, but I'd highly recommend it if you can. The reason for that is that the form name is also used as the subject line and it's really nice to have uh, some information about where the email is being sent from on the receiver's point of view. If you want to fill out a description, you can. If you want to delete it, you can also do that. Now, while we're in form settings, let's go all the way down. When they finish your form, what do you want to happen? In the, by default, it's set to show a message, success, thanks for filling out my form. We probably want to change that a little, something simple like that. We can also redirect them to a page on your website if you want to. You can just click that and enter the URL of the page you want them to be redirected to. We're going to go show text for now. We can also send an email confirmation to the user, but we're going to get into that in a second because we need to have some fields in here before we can really utilize that. So let's go ahead and start adding some fields. So we're going to click Add Field, and the first thing we're going to collect is their name. We're going to say name, and let's make this required because we need to know who they are. Now we want to add another field. Let's make this one their email address. And we'll also make this one required because we need to be able to contact them. And let's add another field for, how about a subject? What, what's the topic of your email? And then we'll add one more field, which would be paragraph text. And we'll make that required too, because we need them to say something. And that's all we need in this one. So we're going to go ahead and hit Save Form. And it gives us a bunch of options, but right now I want to go back to continue editing this form. And the reason I want to do that is now I want to go back to the form settings again, and we can work on this confirmation email to the user. So in this case, we might just want to say, hey, thanks for contacting us. Your email's been received. We'll get back in touch with you soon. Something like that. So let's go ahead and send this. Now, where do we want it sent to? We want it sent to email, which is this field up here. Reply to. If you want users to be able to reply to the email, you need to enter the email address you want it replied to. In our case, I'll enter the PTA's general email box. And now I'm going to click Customize Confirmation Email. This is where you can type a message into the person that submitted the form. We can also include a copy of their message below, so let's go ahead and save that. Now, who do you want it sent from? And here's the checkbox to include a copy of what they submitted, since we mentioned that they're going to get a copy of it up there. Now we'll hit Done. So that's all set. Now let's go ahead and hit Save Form. And this time, we're going to go set up email notifications for this form. So when somebody submits an email, where do you want it sent to? So let's put this information right here. All right, and send a reply to. If we reply to the email, do we want it not to be able to reply to, or do we want to be able to reply directly to the people? So let's go ahead and say we want to reply directly to the people, and then we'll hit save. You do also have the ability to customize that notification email, like John PTA, and then this is where you've got your form name coming in. So the form name is the name, and then the entry ID. So we'll just leave that as it is, and hit done. And we'll save that. Now, once we've created our form and we've created our notifications, let's go back to the Forms tab here, and we should have two of them listed. Our pretend registration form and our new form is up top. Now we're going to go to Code. And once you're in Code, we're going to click on Embed Form Code. So this is going to give us the embed options. Now we need to use the WordPress short code. So let's keep this open in this tab. And we'll go back over to our dashboard. And let's go find that page. So we're going to go to Pages, All Pages. Now we have PTA info, contact us, email the PTA. So this is the only one. So we'll go ahead and click on that title. And at this point, we have nothing in there. So let's go back to Wufu real quick. And let's grab this shortcut. Just take the whole thing, highlight it, and hit copy. Let's go back here. And it doesn't matter if you're in visual or HTML, either one of these tabs works. And you're going to paste that code in. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hit update. And if we go back to this page and we refresh it, you'll see that we now have the full code in there and it works perfectly. One option you do have, you'll notice on the live site, you've got this is the title that's generated by the website, this is the title that's generated by the form. 
Sometimes they're redundant. Sometimes they were great. This one seems to be a little bit redundant. So what we're going to do, is we're going to go back to our edit page where it says header show. We're going to change show to hide and hit update. And we'll refresh this page. And you notice that the email, the Micklejohn PTA portion is gone from this. So that looks a little bit cleaner like that. Okay, now let's take a look at a little more complicated form. One of our options is to submit news to the Tuesday email newsletter, and this helps us get the news submitted to us in the format that we need with the right amount of information that we need for our newsletters. So let's talk about building this form. So we're going to go back to Wufu, back to forms. We're going to click new form. And this one we're going to call the Micklejohn Weekly Email Submission Form. I'm going to include a little bit of information on this one explaining how to submit the form, when it's due, etc. Now in this one we're going to have the text show again. We're going to change it to this. Now the capture is one thing we didn't talk about before. I recommend putting this on auto. What the capture does is if you've got a lot of forms being submitted all at the same time, it's usually by a robot or a spam bot. So what will happen is the captcha will automatically turn on and that's that little thing that asks you to fill out these two words and prove you're a human. So I recommend putting that on auto. Now we're going to start adding fields. So let's start with name. And we're going to call this name of person submitting this form. And we'll make it required. Now we're going to add email. And we're going to call this your contact email address. And this is going to be required as well. Now we're going to put in a single line text. In this one, we're going to ask them to tell us what title they'd like us to use for their section. And we're going to make this required as well. Now we're going to add a field called a section breaks. We'll drag it down. And this breaks apart the form a little bit and gives some information. And then a little information about it right there. Now we're going to add another field. And this time we're going to add a paragraph field. We'll give people a little bit more space to write. And we're going to make this a large field so it's a little bit bigger. We also want to make this one required because this is the information they're trying to submit. And in this field, at our school, we like to limit the amount of words that they include so that our emails don't get too long. So we limit ours to 150 words. That way they can't submit anything longer than 150 words. And it puts a nice little counter down at the bottom so they know when they're getting close. Now, because they might have more information than 150 words, we're going to add another field here with a section break. And we're going to add some information about how they can add additional content. So if they have more information they want submitted, they can add it down here. And this will get added only to the website, not to the emails. So we're going to add another paragraph. And we're going to make this one large as well. And on this one, we're not going to limit it at all. So they can write as much as they want there. Now we're also going to give them the option to upload an image and a file. So we're going to do an add field. And we're going to ask them a multiple choice question. And the question is... Do you have an image you'd like to use for your submission? And the options are, no, you can pick one for me, or yes, I want to upload an image. And we'll get rid of the third choice by hitting the minus sign. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule here that only shows this if they check yes. But right now what we're going to do is put all the fields in. So we're going to add another field. And this time we're going to do file upload. And we'll say, please upload your image here. Now we're going to ask them another question, add field choice. Do you need us to upload a PDF document to the Micklejohn website? First answer is no. Second answer is yes. And we'll hit the minus sign to get rid of the third option. We're going to add another choice. This will be another file upload. We'll add some information about it. And it's all set. Now we're going to save the form. Now again, we're going to go back and edit this form real quick so we can send an email confirmation. So we're going to go back to form settings. And now that we have the email address in here, we can send an email confirmation to the user. So let's go ahead and click that. We'll send that to the contact address. And we will customize the confirmation email. We'll thank them for sending their stuff in. We'll make it from Michael John PTA and we'll include a copy of what they sent and say done. And that's all we have to do on that. Now we'll save form. And this time we'll set up email notifications for the form. We're still testing, so we're going to put in a fake email address right now. And we'll set the reply to your contact email address. And we'll hit save. And we'll customize the notification email so it comes from us. We don't need to change any of that. And we'll hit done. And we'll hit save. Now, the last thing we need to do is set up the rules for this form. So on our weekly email submission form, we're going to click rules. And we just need to add two rules. 
So the first thing we'll say, we're going to click create a field rule. We're going to select our question. So do you have an image you would like to use for your submission? If that is yes, I want to upload an image, then we're going to show. Please upload your image here. And we're going to add another one. Do you need us to upload a PDF document? If the answer is yes, show. Please upload your file here. Then we're going to click Save Field Rules. And let's take a look at this form real quick and make sure it's working. So here's our form in a new window. Let's scroll down. Let's see we have our limited words right here. The full content. You don't see the file uploads until we hit yes. And again with this one. And our form's ready to be embedded. So go ahead and close that. Now we're going to go back to forms. We're going to click code. We're going to click embed form code. And we're going to highlight this and copy it. And we'll go back here to all pages. We'll scroll down to submit Tuesday email news. We'll click on that. We will paste in the code we just copied. And we'll hit update. And now we'll go back to that tab and refresh this. And you'll see our new form perfectly embedded. It expands as needed based on our rules. Now I want to show you another scenario where you might want to link to your form versus embed the form and I want to show you how to do that. For example, on our join page, we put our form right on the join page initially, but this form does collect payments and while the form itself is secure, this is actually a different page than this right here. The form itself is secure but the website itself doesn't show HTTPS for secure. So sometimes parents may question whether or not the form is secure if it's collecting payment. So what we recommend doing is linking to your form if you're collecting payment on the form. And let me show you how to do that real quick. So the first thing we'll do is we'll navigate to that page. Here's our join, so we'll click this. When it loads, you'll notice we have the WooFu embed code form right here. Well, in this scenario, we want to link to our form instead. So what we're going to do is go back to Wufu, and we were on the embed form code. This time, we're going to say link to form, and the permanent short link URL is the best one. So let's go ahead and take that, and we'll copy that. We'll go back to our page, and this time, we're going to get rid of this code, and we're going to say click here to join the PTA. And let's make that bold. And now we're going to make a link. So we'll click the link. We'll paste in our WooFu code. And this time we're going to click Open Link in New Tab or Window and hit Add Link. Now we'll hit Update. Now when we go to the Join page and we refresh it, we'll see click here to join the PTA. So we click that and we get a brand new form that's secure that they can fill out and make their payments on. So that's a quick summary on how to add additional forms to your website using Wufu. Thanks for watching.